here we are at Hapney Pier Harwich, which is centred at the ancient port of Harwich, uh, in the museum uh, run and set up by the Harwich Society, a historical local society. Without Mayflower, we'd have had no Mayflower Compact, and arguably without Mayflower Compact, we'd have had no American Constitution. So these are crucial events, and we're going to examine Mayflower in comparison with the other expedition, that being the Jamestown expedition led by Harwich man Christopher Newport. So whereas with uh, Mayflower, uh, Jones is very much left out of the history in a lot of senses, simply really because Mayflower is chronicled by William Bradford in his journal of Plymouth, Plymouth Plantation and he really doesn't make much reference to Jones, particularly Jones' incredible leadership. We have a similar scenario with the Jamestown expedition in as much as that was chronicled by John Smith, the infamous John Smith of Pocahontas Association, and he really leaves Newport out of the picture. Yet Newport was the leader of the Jamestown expedition. Without Newport's really strong leadership, that entire expedition would never have got anywhere. Uh, and of course, uh, Smith rebels several times, twice in fact, and is due to be hung, uh, and it's Newport that saves him. But yet Smith still chooses to leave, leave Newport out of, the, uh, out of his journals. But Newport was a, a remarkable leader, a, a remarkable seaman. Um, that really is um, given some level of recognition in what is the equivalent of a Spielberg blockbuster of the time in the play written by Shakespeare, The Tempest. And we have that depicted here, where on the fifth expeditionary trip, Newport gets shipwrecked in Bermuda. He leads the crew there and the passengers uh, to building two craft over the 10 months that they're there. And he sails from that shipwreck situation to Jamestown, taking only 14 days to actually get there some 10 months after being shipwrecked. Um, he becomes, in my view, uh, Newport, something of the folk character of the pirate in as much as he has a severed hand and yet he carries on with his, um, with his career. Uh, and of course he's shipwrecked. So he has all the ingredients of the stereotyping of the pirate and the privateer. So we have him marked in history in that sense, but his name is not out there amongst the heroes, and it should be. This is a facsimile statue of Christopher Newport. Um, as the experts will say, there is um, some imagery that's probably not quite correct in as much as this image of him is showing that he has a right hand and of course we know that he didn't and we're not quite sure where it was severed off but certainly he didn't have a hand um, and this is actually the uh, miniature practice run by the artist uh, for the fully fledged uh, huge statue in Jamestown outside Newport University there so we're very grateful uh, to have this image of Newport uh, and we don't have any image of Christopher Jones no portrait no facsimile no statue of him so we don't quite know what he looked like but we do know the nature of the man and of course we know the nature of this man as an incredible military leader and hero and what I'd like to do is just partner him up really with Jones through a number of connections between the two men and probably the most outstanding connection between the two men is a man by the name of Thomas Thompson and Thompson sailed with Newport uh, numerous times. Newport's notoriety and he was somewhat favoured by King James consequently that's why he was selected for this extraordinary expedition known as the Jamestown expedition uh, and really he established himself with the seizing of the uh, Portuguese galleon, the Madre de Dios. Now it was Thomas Thompson, uh, also a Harwich man, 
who was the man that first set foot on that galleon when it was surrendered uh, and it was seized. And there's a remarkable story around that galleon in as much as the amount of treasure exceeded anything that had ever been seized before and uh, a lot of it went missing. So I like to think that maybe here in Harwich, as I sit here, maybe under the floor of this home, there might be treasure. Uh, there might be treasure right outside that window, buried, pirate treasure. Um, but such are the thing of myths. So let's get back to Thomas Thompson and who he was and how he connects and how his social history connects with Newport and connects Jones to Newport. And that, in his, that was through marriage. So Christopher Jones's second wife, Josin Jones, was Thomas Thompson's daughter. So there was a very definite connection there. And the other connection that we can rightly assume between Newport and Jones is that uh, we know that John Smith uh, mapped a lot of the Cape Cod area, which is where Mayflower ends up by, let's say, destiny. And we also know that a Native American by the name of Squanto was captured and brought back to the UK through the Jamestown expedition. And Squanto then ends up living in London. And at some stage while he was here, he acquires English language, of course, and he lives with a family by the name of the Slaneys. And the Slaneys were wine merchants and customers of Christopher Jones. So we can start to network Newport and Jamestown and Jones and Mayflower together. Now, my father was a, a pilot out of Harwich. And one of the things that he did with his pilot colleagues was that they would share maps and they would share stories of sandbanks that would shift, etc., etc. So my hypothesis around Jones and Newport and Thomas Thompson and Squanto is that there was a sharing of information and that Jones would have prepared himself for this expedition. This was not something that he would have taken lightly. He would have researched what he could, and we know that he had maps, and those maps can be attributed back to John Smith of, of, of Jamestown, and Smith was under Newport's command. So we can reasonably as, uh, um, assume that within the community, the co commercial community of Harwich, there would have been associations between these men, uh, either vicariously through other men or personally between each other, because Jones would have had to have do, done his research. And of course, we had um, the escort ship, uh, the Speedwell, and uh, Captain Reynolds. Uh, obviously, Reynolds was also a, a professional seaman, and any professional seaman will do their research before they set about any sort of voyage. So whereas it's been looked at, I think, wrongly over the years as just an ad hoc adventure uh, where people are thrown together on a ship that wasn't really purpose built by any um, stretch of the imagination, uh, Mayflower being a, a cargo ship, in actual fact, there would have been quite a lot of planning and Jones would have been entirely responsible for that planning. And his greatest resource for that planning would have been this man, whether he could have ac accessed him in person or whether he could have accessed people that knew Newport and knew of Newport's knowledge of the seas and the lands uh, where he had created this uh, settlement where many, many others such as Walter Raleigh and Francis Drake had failed. So we're now moving on to look at the cross social lives of these two Harwich sons, these incredible Harwich sons. Uh, we're looking at their anthropology, their background, um, and we're going to move into recent research and archaeolog archaeological discoveries at Jamestown. We're going to look at the spiritual nature of Mayflower. We're going to look at elements. We're going to start to look at the spiritual elements, such as predestination predestiny um, of the beliefs of the separatists uh, and we're going to examine much more uh, a, the comparisons between 
the meanings of the foundations of Jamestown and their implications to contemporary history, contemporary times, and the same with Mayflower. Um, there are similarities, but there are vast differences, and that's where we're going to be taking this. Uh, we're still in Harwich, and we're only a few hundred metres away from the home of Christopher Jones. And here we have an artist's impression of that first step, 3,000 miles away, 66 days uh, of a, an, a, an amazing trip. Uh, we're going to the details of that. And we have represented over here the first man to step ashore, John Alden of Harwich, the ship's cooper, a ship's uh, crew member. Uh, and he decides to stay uh, once the Mayflower leaves and comes back to, to the UK. And we have Mary Chilton, the 14-year-old girl, who is the first woman to step ashore. And the sad but beautiful story is that Chilton lost her parents very soon in that uh, harsh winter that they experienced. And Alden actually adopts her. So um, once again, we have that centering back to Harwich and, uh, and Harwich's uh, important stance in the founding of America. Here we are at St Nicholas Church, Harwich, and there's been a church on this site since the 11th century. And of course in the 11th century and right up until the 1500s, that would have been a Roman Catholic church. Uh, we're blessed to still have the original font, baptismal font, dated the 13th century. The church currently on this site is a Church of England church and is dated from the 1900s. And when we examine the transfer from Roman Catholic to Church of England, we see the point of the whole separatist movement. By the time Mayflower comes about and the sailing of the Mayflower to America, we've had a hundred years of Reformation. But what the separatists of Mayflower and their colleagues saw in the Reformation was really a rebranding of the same expression of church. And their view was that this was not founded in the Bible. So they were far more fundamental in their biblical views. So focusing, as the separatists did, on 2 Corinthians 6, 16 to 18. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So we shall move on now and compare the two expeditions led by these two incredible Harwich men. That's the expedition of Jamestown and the expedition of Mayflower. And the comparison will be somewhat anthropological, but mainly it will be an expression of the spiritual natures of both these expeditions. Mm -hmm. 